the SCO is under the foreign minister. Why now? Why at a time when there's so much political stakes, uh, when the political stakes are so high and there's so much political instability? Okay, first of all, I think the most important thing to note is that the chairperson of the Pakistan People's Party has chosen to be the foreign minister of Pakistan. And I think he takes his job very seriously. So what might be politically not the expedient thing to do or the right thing to do or the you know, popular thing to do, but it is the correct thing to do as far as Pakistan's interests are concerned, he ch tends to choose Pakistan over his political, you know, and within the same line. I think to frame it as why an India visit, this is not at all an India visit. It must not be seen as an India visit. It's an SEO visit. Now, SEO happens to be an organization where before becoming a full member that India and Pakistan, as you may recall, became simultaneously, has a precondition that uh, bilateral disputes or bilateral issues will not be, will come in the way of SCO's work, right? Now, uh, since SCO has been set up, every ministerial meeting has been attended by Pakistan's foreign ministers, whoever it may be at that time. And uh, there is absolutely no reason for Pakistan to lock itself out of an SCO meet, which is of this importance, which is at uh, a time where many of the challenges that the region faces and many of the uh, issues that the SEO grapples with are ones which are at the heart of Pakistan's diplomacy, at the heart of Pakistan's concerns, at the heart of what Pakistan wants to project of itself and what Pakistan wants to give to the world and to contribute to world's diplomacy, you know, to, to the region being able to find common solutions, right? We have seen SARC uh, become irrelevant because of rivalries and animosity between two countries. We certainly do not want to be a contributor to SEO falling prey to the same uh, exigencies. Do we expect a bilateral meeting or any such movement in this visit? I know you've mentioned about the SCO bit. Uh, will, and the bigger question is, I think, uh, is the Kashmir bit. Will there be talk of Kashmir by the Pakistani foreign minister in Goa, do, even during his bilateral interactions? Look, um, as far as uh, should we read into it, should we expect it, you can expect whatever you wish. <laughs> you, can, you can be delusional and expect whatever you wish, okay? But as I have already categorically said, there is no bilateral element in this particular visit, right? There are always side bilateral meetings that you seek. Um, in this particular context, I don't think we, we have made no request for any meeting. We have, so that is where we are. Um, and Kashmir? Look, Kashmir, Pakistan is, Kashmir is not a Pakistan problem. Kashmir is a problem. Okay, it is, doesn't become a problem because we say it's a problem. We, it's a problem because it is recognized by the highest international body, the United Nations Security Council, as a dispute between two countries. And this, this dispute was not taken to the Security Council, by the way, by Pakistan. It was taken to the Security Council by the state of India. They went to the Security Council and said, we have a dispute with Pakistan on this. The uh, Security Council took the cognizance of it and has resolutions which tell you the way to solve this dispute. So that is where it is. Nothing has changed uh, since then, in the sense that nothing has changed within the bilateral. Uh, so uh, when it comes to talking about Kashmir, anywhere and everywhere, that Pakistan brings out the reality of Kashmir and Pakistan will continue to do so. Is there a reason why the defense minister is attending the SCO summit virtually while the foreign minister of Pakistan is attending the same meeting of the foreign ministers of the same forum in person? Look, there are many factors which depend of, you know, on the availability of the uh, specific ministers, uh, you know, what is their workload within their capital, within their home capital, and many other factors. But uh, clearly, uh, you would, would know that the foreign ministers' meetings typically bring out all the various elements of the judicial meeting, of the, uh, you know, the meeting on environment, the meeting of interior ministers, the meeting of defense ministers, all of it together. And it's the main frame, as they call, call it in IT language. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan has criticized the foreign minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on his upcoming visit to India. Uh, do you see any merit in this uh, critique? Or is it just uh, criticism politics or, you know, uh, opportunism that Imran Khan is engaging with? Look, if there's one thing that um, Mr. Khan stands out for, it is being very, very frivolous with Pakistan's diplomatic foreign policy management. Okay? And if there's one thing that he stands out for, it is using Pakistan's foreign policy pursuits 
for his personal and political interests. Okay, I, I think when there's a long line and list, the famous uh, telegram issue, the issue of uh, calling names to some certain ambassadors uh, who called out what was their due share, and many other things. So I think uh, they have exploited, uh, you know, foreign policy questions for political gains. He's not the only one in the world who does that, right? But clearly, he stands out within his peers, within the political system in Pakistan, to put the country's interest, uh, you know, literally to risk country's interest for political, for personal political interest. And that's why I think the Pakistan People's Party, on the other hand, stands out to uh, put the country's interest first and uh, their own political interest later. It is the most senior level trip uh, by any Pakistani official uh, in seven years, the last time Sartaz Zisa was there. And coincidentally, you were the last foreign minister from Pakistan to visit India in 2012. Uh, how do you look at this tour? Okay, again, I'm going to question your framing of this because this is not an India tour. It's not an India visit. It's an SEO visit, right? So look at it within the framework of the SEO visit. Do not at all try and look at it as, oh, this is Pakistan trying to do this. We are not looking at it in the bilateral context. That cannot be that difficult to fathom, right? It's not a bilateral visit. It is an SEO visit. So any connotations, permutations, you know, uh, gestures and all of that lovely things that you do in diplomacy in the normal state-to-state -state relations, perhaps should be, um, you know, we need to look beyond that and look at it as a purely, it's like somebody you going to the UNGA. Every, uh, every country in the world, including, uh, you know, when Iran and uh, US are not speaking to each other, the Iranian president does find his way to New York to attend the UN General Assembly session because it is an important multilateral body. Uh, where his presence is required for the sake of his country. So please look at this entirely in that context. I don't think I could come up with a better example. Which is a bigger challenge given Pakistan is engulfed by political instability, you've got inflation issues, you've got the constitutional crisis now with the government coming at locked horns with the judiciary and the rise of the GTP. So which is the bigger challenge for this government? Look, I think uh, the g bigger challenge, not only for the government, but for the country, and for everyone who plays a role in making the country what it is, is that this country is screaming out for stability. I think one thing that I have seen, I, it's been too long since I've also been in politics, almost 20 years, right? And every time I remember being in government, I remember you know, the things like Memo Gate, things like uh, the, the Five Pakistan Council, and all of these conglomerates which will come out in the way of normal governance. This country needs time out. Okay, from drama. It can, this country needs time out to really get, not into making broad statements, but really working to make those statements a reality and to translate them into, you know, something that benefits the ordinary Pakistani. So I think the, the, the biggest challenge you need, you know, the biggest, uh, the, the, the most important thing a country needs is stability and peace. So yes, TTP is a very big challenge. Terrorism continues to be a challenge. Stability, economic stability, political stability is what we need. And that, that is a precursor in some way or a prerequisite for your other challenges to be, to, to, to be dealt with. Do you see Afghanistan cooperating in handling the TTP menace? And uh, is, or is Pakistan going to go ahead with a kinetic operation as there have been talks about it in Afghanistan? I was in Afghanistan in November and I continue to engage with them. We all continue to engage with them. Um, uh, the last uh, thing, the last fragment of the sentence that you mentioned, I don't think we should ever be looking at anything which is over and above international law. As propagators, supporters, promoters of international law, as a country which calls out other countries when they do such things, uh, we would obviously want to steer away from any such designs or ambitions uh, whatsoever. Uh, now, if you were to ask me how, what, what is your assessment, if we have the last year to go by, my assessment cannot be very positive. The foreign minister has spoken about it and casted his fears. Recently, we saw the former prime minister, Shahid Khan Abbasi, also talking about it, that the political stability in the, in the country is such that it is a recipe for a martial law, for a takeover. Do you agree with this? Or uh, is democracy really doomed in Pakistan? I don't think democracy can be doomed in a country which was, be, which was made through the strength of democracy. You know, we all forget that Pakistan was made on democratic strength, not on military strength, right? 
uh, whether some, you know, martial law, etc. I, I, I don't concern myself with making, you know, looking into a crystal ball and saying what's going to happen, what's gonna, not going to happen. What I concern myself is to look downward at the job that you have at hand and to be able to do the best possible job. I think in the foreign office, the foreign minister of Pakistan has, as I said uh, repeatedly, I think what we have been able to do in this office within, under his leadership is to really guide the country's interest and to make them the mainstay, to make them the nucleus, okay, and to make them the mainframe and to make them the CPU, if you call it. Um, and, and to determine all our actions and reactions based on that. Uh, and I think we will continue to be on that course. What is the solution to the current political crisis in Pakistan? With the IMF set to come in the picture, how hopeful is the government of respite given that the IMF sees the growth rate in this year at less than a percent? If this government had been able to, or is able to in the next few months, is able to just be able to concentrate on what it is its job is, which is governance, right? Which is everybody working within their own ministries, trying to make it more efficient. Unfortunately, I think you talk about the perfect storm. Why is this a country which sees a perfect storm every other year? Because every institution needs to be doing what is their job to do. We cannot start redefining the constitution, right? So I think it's important that we are able to just, um, it's not within our hands to not be able to create all of these external storms outside of the governance structure, which continue to come. So my plea to everyone is to please give this country some time off internally within Pakistan. Uh, this is an SEO visit and irrespective, the location is India. And we've seen that there's a history. The last time the Pakistan People's Party uh, government was in power, Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Ghilani said on the House, of, he spoke about state within a state. We've got statements from Senator Raza Rabani. Whosoever, whichever government tries to engage uh, with India, we see that there are some unforeseen events that take place and that derail the process. Uh, Sharm el Sheikh happened and then the Mumbai attacks happened. Uh, we saw Prime Minister Modi coming for Prime Minister Shabaz Sharif's uh, granddaughter's wedding and then the Uri attacks happened. So uh, this time, are all the stakeholders really on board for this visit? Look, Anas, I will not allow you to do the framing of this visit, much as you would like to bait me on it, right? Allow the Foreign Office of Pakistan to do the framing of this, and the framing is clear. This is not a bilateral visit. It is a visit to an SEO event, okay, which, can, which is in Goa and the Foreign Minister is going. If it was in Timbuktu, the Foreign Minister would be going. If it was in Washington, D.C., the Foreign Minister would be going. If it was in Beijing, the Foreign Minister would be going. The Foreign Minister is going to an SEO event. That is the reality of it, right? When it comes to the stakeholders, no, I don't know what you are considering and who you are referring to as stakeholders, but I can assure you that whatever you are referring to as the stakeholders, those which are within the ambit of your imagination and those which are beyond the ambit of your imagination are all on board, have all been consulted as far as Pakistan's quest to remain part of the SCO, this particular conference, as with any other conference. So I can assure you that we do our work well, we do our homework well, and yes, there's absolutely no reason. Uh, we have consulted everyone, the, including the most important is the PMO, the Prime Minister's office, right? Because his full political ownership, others, other entities that you're referring to, um, absolutely, everybody's on, you know, I hate to use the word same page because it's been used correctly and incorrectly quite often, but yes, everybody is on board as far as there's no reason why the Foreign Minister should or lock his country out of an SEO event. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for taking our time and speaking to Vion and doing this.